All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. Listen up. So in earlier teachings, we talked about the first resurrection at the millennial reign of Christ. So this is going to be for like believers who made it through the tribulation uh, and the, those who were martyred for Christ. And this verse here, it talks to us about... All right, remember what he said. The first resurrection, he says, are believers that made it through the tribulation and those who were martyred for Christ. All right, let's listen to that again. This is important. Each according to his works. So in earlier teachings, we talked about the first resurrection at the millennial reign of Christ. So this is going to be for like believers who made it through the tribulation uh, and the, those who were martyred for Christ. And this verse here, it talks to us about the... Okay. Keep that in mind. The, the, because the reason why this is so important is because he's excluding a whole bunch of people. And here's the thing. This is what... 99% of the people are teaching. It's incredible. Nobody pays attention to anything that they're saying. And so I, I feel compelled to say, hey, look, this is what they're teaching, and it's clearly wrong. What amazes me is it seems like nobody is able to see it. The second resurrection. And this is the resurrection of unbelievers. Okay? They're going to come before the great white throne to face their punishment. So they'll come from the depths of the sea to stand. Yes, all right. So blah, 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 blah. All right. It, there, and before God? There's only one resurrection at the end of the world. All right. Let me show you that. Let me show you. very clearly very simply one resurrection at the end of the world okay one resurrection at the end of the world many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt it's the only time it's the only time all right now It's, and this is the same time. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Alright, let's define the first resurrection. The first resurrection is not at the end of the world. Now, maybe I should go back and say, hey, what's the end of the world? Well, the end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right? <laughs> Jesus is asked specifically, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? All right, so the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? This is the end of the world. Alright. So when it's the end of the world that means this world comes to an end. Pretty simple, right? Consider this. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Alright, so... When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. All right, and what happens at the end of the world? The angels of God gather together the elect. All right, this is 
what Daniel's referring to when he says many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Alright, so let's, before we go too much further, let's go to 2 Peter 3 and let's kill, crush, destroy this idea that the end of the world is not the end of the world. Alright, so we know that God destroyed the world by water in the days of Noah. And God placed a rainbow in the sky as a sign that he will never destroy the world again by water. This time he's not going to destroy it by water but he's going to destroy it by fire. All right, The heavens shall pass away with the great noise. All right. Here we go. Reserved unto fire against the day. The heavens and the earth which are now are by the same word kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, behold, uh, excuse me, but the day of the Lord will be will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passes away in the lust thereof. All right? See the comparison? See the parallels there All right see the parallels and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up this is when when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world now that's so important because I'm, t I'm it seems like nobody gets it it seems to me like nobody gets it. They want to continue this world with a thousand bonus years of what they think is going to be guilt-free sex. That's what they that's that's what they're teaching. That's really what they're teaching. And it's obvious this world is coming to an end when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Behold, let's see. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. At an hour which no man ex which uh, at an hour which no man expects. Alright, okay. Alright, so let's go to first Corinthians fifteen. Let's establish the first resurrection. All right, let's establish the first resurrection. The first resurrection is it? Is it going to be saved people? Is it going to be unsaved people? What 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 other option do we have? <laughs> well, if you consider right now. There's only been one person resurrected. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. 
compare this with 2 Peter 3. The day of the Lord will come as a thief of the night. Thief, and thief in the night. So, you got Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. When That's the end of the world. Right? And when he comes in the clouds of heaven, the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Right? You see that, right? So when he comes, that's it. It's the end of the world. Afterward, they that are Christ, that is coming. Christ, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ, that is coming. So you can't have an additional 1,000 years. It's impossible. According to the scripture, it's in contradiction. Right? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right, so that eliminates the possibility of a thousand year period. It, it, there's no reason at all to even preach, or even talk about, really, this idea of a thousand year period after the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's like all these guys are subscribing to a foreign religion outside of the Bible. What these guys are teaching is not in the Bible at all. 1 Corinthians 15 Every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit, afterward they that are Christ that is coming. And then comes the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Right? And that goes all the way back to Genesis 3, verse 16, when the Lord said of the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. See, Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. And once all evils destroy forever, there is no more Sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, no more death. All right? It, it's pretty simple. It really is. It's very, very simple. Now, who is the first resurrection? Well, clearly, it's Jesus. The first fruits of them that slept. So he has to be the first resurrection. Right? There's no, there's no wiggle room there. To say that the first resurrection happens when Jesus returns in the clouds of heaven is to say that Jesus was never resurrected in the first place. You're denying the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ when you claim the first resurrection happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. So many people, I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible how many people are blind. They, don't, they can't see it. So who's the first resurrection? If we were to ask Jesus, what would he say? <laughs> Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection. So who's the first resurrection? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. The first fruits of them that slept. Right? Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus even says, I am the resurrection. So he is the first resurrection. Right? Now Christ is risen, resurrected, from the dead and become the first fruits of them, the first 
resurrection. Right? <laughs> Christ, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Every man in his own order. So Christ is the first resurrection, and then when he returns for us, we are lifted up. We are resurrected. We are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. And we will put on immortality. We will put on incorruption. And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory right O oh, death where is thy sting O oh, grave where is thy victory all right so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world we are changed forever and the enemy is destroyed forever and there will be new heavens and a new earth it's quite simple really and it's consistent all the way from Genesis to Revelation and it's what else is consistent is all these guys they teach things as if they have no idea what the Bible says at all I mean it's incredible it, it really is I can find something comparable here make the heart of this people fat make their eyes heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed see these the reason people can't see it is because they don't believe and so it's incredible why do you see so many false teachers because they don't believe even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart they can't see even when they read it they still cannot see because the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil, oh, excuse me, the veil shall be taken away. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So you think about all these people that are falsely teaching this end time scenario, whatever you want to call it, of an additional thousand years. Why would you think they're saved? All right. Why aren't they able to see it? Why are they blind? Why are they teaching falsely? Are they not able to see the clear and obvious and simple word of God? Think about this. If not, if what I'm saying is true, 99.9% .9 of every preacher in the world is teaching falsely. And because they're teaching falsely, that means they're not saved. Because they're blind, they're blind because they're not saved. They don't have the spirit of truth, the spirit of God in them. They're blind because they have no faith. No faith at all. That's why they're blind. If that's true, consider this. Luke 18. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith? on the earth and that's a heck of a question to ask isn't it right it's a heck of a question to ask because it's implying that hey maybe nobody's saved and will he find faith on the earth 
Uh, why even ask that? Why even ask that if there's millions upon millions of people saved? That would not be a rational question. Would not be a reasonable question to ask if millions and millions of people are saved. And if millions and millions of people are saved, why can't they see the simple truth of the scripture? Right? So, to me, it's remarkable. It's remarkable. Think about, in the days of Noah, how many were saved? In the days of Noah? Before, or when God destroyed the world by water? There was only eight souls that were saved. Right? In the days when... Uh, Uh, when Sodom and Gomorrah and, and the cities round about were full of wickedness, there was not even ten righteous. What, what am I missing here? And you know, and there, yeah, there wasn't even ten righteous. Let's go here. Let me find it first here. Come on now. Here we go. Alright, so that Abraham negotiated with, well, what if there's 50 righteous? Right, Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Per adventure there would be 50 righteous. Wasn't it? Did it start out 100 or was it 50? I can't remember now. It started out 50, didn't it? I do believe. Anyway, so there weren't 50 righteous, and then Abraham got to thinking about. Uh, wait a second. There ain't that many right. Well, let's go 40. And you know, he goes 40 and 5. 40, he goes 50, 45, and the more he thinks about it. And he goes down to 30, then to 20, and then to 10, and then what happened? Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed. There weren't even 10 righteous. So in the days of Noah, there, weren't even, there was only 8 saved. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, there wasn't even 10 righteous. It got destroyed. And now... The question is, is there anybody on earth today that are born of God? If these guys are born of God, why are they so blind? Alright, why? Because clearly, when you are born... Uh, when you're born of God, let me see if I can find that. Let's do it this way. All right. So when the when the Comforter is come, which is the Spirit of God, which is God. And when the Comforter is come, <clears throat> excuse me, he will show you all, all truth. All things. No? All things are all truth. Hold on a second. Oh, goodness sakes. I can't find it. Forgive me here. Forgive me here. Forgive me here. Okay, so what? Am I a chapter off or something? All right, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send 
unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Okay, so when the Comforter is come, here, I gotta do this here. I gotta do this here. I apologize. I apologize. Let's do this this way, this way. Oh, that's yeah. I saw a chapter off. I knew it. I should have known. I should have known. All right, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now. These guys. It's not just this guy. I, I do this ev all the time all the time I show you how all these guys are wrong they're all wrong they're all way off I mean they're not even close man not even close if they were close I would like to give them some leniency to in some you know some time to get it right but these guys that they, they're just saying to hell with what the Bible says and they're trying to parrot or echo what they've heard other men say the word on the street to hell with the word of God what's the word on the street are you not able to see that all right so the comforter which is the Holy Ghost shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Okay, it's inc it's incredible. It really is. It's incredible to see so many people get something so simple so wrong. All right, let's uh, continue. Let's listen to a few seconds of this guy with a nice shirt. Very clear. So, problems with amillennial theology. Number one, no literal thousand years. Oh, why is that a problem? Okay, hey, that doesn't even make sense, does it? Well, that's a problem. It's not literal thousand years. Well, the problem isn't that. All right. The pro okay, first of all, this guy's not being honest. He wants that thousand bonus years of guilt-free sex with as many women as he chooses. That's the problem. Okay. That's the problem. All right. Okay, so consider this. Try to keep something simple here, right? For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. But after a thousand, you know, one thousand and one hills, then it's they're not gods, right? Who do they belong to? Well, then you got to every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. So, uh, huh? Well, what if the forest is on it? more than a thousand hills see that's not the issue at all that's not the issue I could I, I could run through a bunch of bunch of stuff regarding these numbers okay a bunch of numbers a bunch of Examples. Yeah, okay. Just let's go. Years. And yet the Bible says it's a literal thousand years. Number two. <laughs> the Bible says it's yet the Bible says it's a literal thousand years. Oh year. Okay. Alright. Now it's it, it, to me it's interesting when somebody tries to make this case of being literal. Oh, it's literal. I believe it's literal. I believe you're stupider and stupid. Because you're going to take that as literal. But then you're going to miss the very obvious. They lived and reigned with Christ. You're not taking nothing literal. When you say Christ literally reigns a thousand years. It doesn't say that. 
is talking about believers. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It's the believers living and reigning with Christ. It's not Christ reigning a thousand years. It's the believers in Christ reigning with Christ a thousand years. <laughs> Is it just uh, is it stupidity? Is it brain damage, or is it just the fact that they don't believe what is plainly written? Oh, the that's literal. You're not taking nothing literal. You're taking whatever's written and rejecting it. Re they reject that. They reject that. They reject the whole thing. And that's why they're blind and they can't see. They don't have the truth in them. Jesus does not physically reign from Jerusalem on the throne of David as king. Oh, and now listen. Jesus does not physically reign from Jerusalem on the throne of David as king. And yet the Bible says that he will return and he will reign. Oh. No. Hold on a second. The Bible says that Jesus reigns over the house of Jacob forever. Right. Now this guy again, he lied. He says Jesus will reign. But the Bible says Jesus reigns forever. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end all right okay I'm just I gotta point that out and then you notice he says when Jesus returns yeah yeah no he that's right but you didn't want to you didn't want to focus on when Jesus returns throne of David is king and yet Jesus does not perish. And yet the Bible says it's a literal thousand listen, years. Number two. Listen. Jesus does not physically reign from Jerusalem on the throne of David as king. And yet the Bible says that he will return. And that he will return. Yeah, he'll return. And then there will be a new heavens and a new earth. And Jesus will be on earth. He'll come. He's prepared a city for us. He'll come down from heaven. It will be lifted up to meet him in the air, and then the enemy will be at our feet and will be destroyed forever. And then we will be set back down on a new earth with new heavens. Now, when he says Jerusalem, he's not talking about Jerusalem above. He's talking about the Middle East. Why? Because he's blind. He does not believe anything written in the Bible at all. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So Jesus has ascended to heaven. He's preparing a place for us. He's going to come back. In the clouds of heaven, we're going to be lifted up, and our enemy is going to be gathered at our feet and destroyed, and there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. We're going to be set back down on a new earth with new heavens. I mean, it's pretty consistent all throughout the Bible. But this guy, he's talking about physically reigning in the Middle East. Not Jerusalem above, but the Middle East that is full of filthiness. Right. Before Jesus sets his foot back down on the earth, this whole place is going to be wiped out.
It's going to be a new earth. And he will reign from Jerusalem right, two over Israel on the sky. and the entire two strikes. world. Now, he know about her, he know about her, he know about her. Okay, so Satan is clearly not bound today. And, and this is incredible, really. Or he's not bound today. Well, let's, first of all, let's just listen to what he says here. Is Satan, uh, number three, Satan clearly not bound today? I would just have to ask, well then, what the hell is going on? I mean, this is crazy. Man, the world has gone mad. And if you think Satan is, is, is right now bound, what would it be like when he's let loose? What would it be like when he's let loose? See? Right there. He says that as if he has no idea what the Bible says. What will it be like when he's let loose? As if completely oblivious to the Word of God. It's incredible. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. What will it be like when he's let loose? And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. The number is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. It tells us exactly what it will be like when he's let loose. Satan is, is, is right now bound? What would it be like when he's let loose? What would it be like when he's let loose? Have you not read Revelation 20? I mean, this is not just Revelation 20. This is consistent all throughout the Bible. Second Peter chapter 3. When the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Oh. Fire come down from God out of heaven and devoured them. What will it be like? Have you not read anything in the Bible? It's incredible. Absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. Really. Oh, goodness gracious. I don't know. Is this the. Yeah, this is it right here. Right, yeah, all right. The parable of the wheat and the tares. The separation is at the end of the world. Right, the harvest is the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's the harvest, it's the end of the world. And the wheat are gathered into the barn and the tares are bound or put in bundles and burned. Fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. Now when this happens, where are we? Where are we when this happens? Do you remember? Do you remember where we're at? What happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? The angels gather together the elect from four corners, from one end to to the other, right? What happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven at the last trump? We will be changed, right? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we will put on this incorruptible flesh, right? We're gathered up. We're gathered up into the clouds to meet the Lord 
in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord remember uh, Re Revelation chapter 1 remember that remember Jesus says behold he cometh with clouds oh wait a second I, I apologize oh. I believe John wrote that didn't he no and from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead the first resurrection the first begotten of the dead same thing see it's a it's a very dangerous thing to listen to men and not the God and not the Word of God and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father to him be glory and dominion forever amen okay they shall be priests of God and of Christ right and shall reign with him a thousand years they shall be priests of God and of Christ and has made us kings and priests right now unto God and the Father right now right now are we a royal priesthood right now behold he comes with the clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so amen men's hearts will be failing them for fear for the things that are coming upon the earth right it's the end of the world all right why are they wailing? Because deep down in their soul, they know it's the end of the world when he comes in the clouds of heaven. It's the end of the world. All right. Oh, poor cat. Somebody took his spot. Somebody took his spot. Now he's mad poor cat okay so it's incredible man incredible strike two strike three oh satan is 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 right now bound oh, what would it be like when he's let loose what would it be like when he let loose what tells us <laughs> it's uh, satan shall be what will it be like when he's let loose satan shall be loosed well it tells us exactly when he's let loose he's gonna gather together all the unsaved people at our feet uh, that's pretty simple stuff man it's not rocket science how could you not see that revelation chapter 3 behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not but do lie behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. We're going to be up in the air. They're going to be at our feet. How can you not see that? Are, did you completely and utterly forget? Here. Let's do this, one. this verse right here. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. What happens? We're lifted up to meet the Lord in the air when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. What do you think's happening right here in Revelation 3, verse 9? What do you think's happening? Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Where are you going to be? Where are you going to be? Are you going to be up in the air? Or are you going to be down on the ground at my feet? 
where are you going to be? And this is a, the exact scenario that this is referencing. All right, there is no other scenario. That's it. This is at the end of the world. All right. It's the only possibility. You don't know. You ain't never read the Bible. You don't know what happens when Satan is let loose. What's going to happen when Satan is let loose? Right, you don't know? You never read the Bible? Satan is, is, is right now bound? What would it be like when he's let loose? What would it be like? Well, let me explain it this way. Okay, so in the Old Testament, right? I don't want to really leave anything out, but in the Old Testament, the nation of God was a group of people with borders. It was a country, if you will, a nation of people, right? And outside of that nation were the nations deceived by Satan. Inside that nation was the Spirit of God. Alright? So here comes Jesus. Alright? Follow me on this. Oh. Follow me on this now. 21. Therefore, I say unto you, that the nation of God shall be, or I'm sorry, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Okay, so in the Old Testament, there's one group of people, one country of people. All right, outside of that country are nations deceived by Satan. Inside that country is the Spirit of God, the um, Spirit of God is with the people inside these borders. Here comes Jesus and he tears down that wall. Alright, it was first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles, right? So he tears down that wall. So now, whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. The kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in him. Right? I, this is consistent with everything in the Bible. How can people not see it? Well, what will happen when Satan let loose? Well, despite the fact that it tells you exactly what happens, there it's also the consideration that you have to have. And that is the fact that before the thousand years are expired the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ when Jesus comes we are gathered together we are lifted up into the air to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord so when we're up in the air our enemy is gathered at our feet so now the kingdom of God is not with any of those people on the earth. They don't have the Spirit of God with them at all. And they can never be saved. And there's only one thing that's going to happen to them. And that is death. The second death. Fire is going to come down from God out of heaven and devour them all. They're going to die the second death. That's the only thing. All right, I mean, it's it's not complicated. It's consistent all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, over and over and over and over and over and over again. And you can't see this then you can't see any of it, can you? I just, I, I don't know. I don't know how you can be saved and be so blind. 
That's three strikes and you're out, buddy. I don't care what kind of shirt you're wearing. You're out. That's it. That's it. That's it. Why the Millennial Kingdom? Uh, red pill. Why waste your time with that stuff? Hope for the future. The Millennial Reign of Christ. Now, what are you talking about? This is a different religion. This is foreign to the Bible. All this is. All this. All this. It's another religion. Separate from the Word of God. It's incredible. Does anybody believe in God? <laughs>